Welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. This is Jake Dreyer. And Joseph Michael of the band Witherfall, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. As always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Joseph Michael from Sanctuary and Jake Dreyer from Iced Earth. They have teamed up to create a metal band called Witherfall. Witherfall have released their EP Vintage via Century Media out now and have released their epic cover of Tom Petty's I Won't Back Down. And that's uh, that's the task right there. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And O to Despair. They have also released their third single, A Tale That Wasn't Right, which was originally recorded by Halloween and released on the classic Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 1 album in 1987. Throwing some tribute there to the 80s, fellas. So uh, how you doing? <laughs> doing all right, man. Doing all right. This is fucking awesome. I, w- I want to jump right to this first because you've got Iced Earth and you've got Sanctuary coming together to form another band. To me, this is like some of the newer slash old school bands coming together for this. I think this is pretty cool in what you guys are doing. Yeah, man. We actually, what's funny is that we formed Witherfall like, fuck, probably <laughs> at least like three years before any of us actually joined Iced Earth or Sanctuary. <laughs> so, yeah, we had this going on first, and then we kind of just ended up in those bands. So how's it been working with Century Media and Red Music so far, guys? We really like Century, man. Over in especially the European offices, like our our team that we have there with Philip and then uh, – Stefan and, and Birgit are uh, they've been really great to us ever since we've we've signed on with them. Yeah, we, we just started working with Red. I think a lot of artists on Century Media in the US got assigned over to the Sony end. So uh, I think Claire uh, is the one that that hooked us up. She's been she's been great, but we've only worked with her since pretty recently. Yeah, Claire's been awesome. She she's gotten me a lot of interviews and I can't thank her enough. And I love mm-hmm. doing this and getting more bands out there. I don't care who they are. I'll, I'll put them out there just about. You know, she's she's done a fantastic job. she got somebody awesome working for you all. Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. we're, we're happy in general with with, with the label and, and uh, how they've been helping to push the records out. I mean, we just need to uh, we need to get out on the road. <laughs> That's really yeah. the only That's priority only number one. Piece. Like that old saying, sail, sail, sail. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. So what brought this band together, guys? Who got the ball rolling? Well, we were both in the same band, and that band took a nosedive for reasons we will not mention here. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Jake and I were uh, just hanging out, like watching the fires burn. And, uh, you know, like he had mentioned that we should just do our own thing. And within a month... <laughs> Him and I were sitting there writing uh, what would become Nocturnes and Requiems. And we had uh, Adam Sagan, which Jake had worked with before on his solo EP. He can let you in a little bit more on that. Yeah, so basically when Joseph and I were on the English Channel and Lime Regis, when uh, the tour we were on fell apart, and we decided to form Witherfall, basically just a band that was like a heavier version of Queen, which is no rules, you know? Mm-hmm. Nothing that was like, oh, we have to sound like x genre or some shit like that so um yeah i'd work like joseph said i'd worked with adam before on an ep and uh i'd really loved his his style of drumming and and i really loved the way that he would compose his drum patterns so yeah pretty much we we officially started working on the songs like joseph had said right when we got back from that tour and we did some pre-production rehearsals with with adam just kind of just doing just tightening up parts of the song, seeing how they're going to fit with the drums. We did a few of those and then uh, went to the studio to record. I, I think that was like maybe like summer of 2014 or something like that, that we went in the studio. 
Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a <laughs> it while like ride. Eternity ago. <laughs> what's impressed or excited you both the most about working on this new EP, if anything? Well, what's caught your guys' eye about it, possibly? I think the fact that it was acoustic, that was definitely something that we were really intrigued by because it's uh it wasn't like it was a challenge or anything it was just something that we wanted to do we we all love way different kinds of music way more different styles than just metal so we uh that was uh that was something that just would have been fun to do so it was uh yeah i guess it was just another fun way how to you know rearrange some of those songs so they would work we also the reason that ep kind of came out was we had we, we did a tour with sonata artica that was a strictly acoustic over in Europe. And it was one of those take it or leave it kind of deals. You're either going to do it acoustic or not do it at all. So we're like, yeah, fuck it. Challenge accepted. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it, it just, it really, the thing is that Witherfall is, it's a horse of a different color. Like, it's, it's just an opportunity for us to show a different side of the band. Yeah, definitely. And it's something that, you know, we, we've kind of touched on it a little bit throughout um there's a couple of acoustic tracks on nocturnes and requiems and also prelude to sorrow so it's not like it was anything too far-fetched away from the band which is it's just a whole other side and doing that tour was also it was a lot of like playing wise it was <laughs> playing wise let me emphasize that it was a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> You guys have released the official music video for A Tale That Wasn't Right, originally by Halloween. It's the third single off their EP. Was it hard to choose between the current set of songs on this EP? Which one would be the first single, let alone a video? Not really. I mean, a lot of the songs had already been, you know, re not well were released on, on different records in some form or another. So the cover songs were really... Uh, the new tracks that no one had ever heard and that and the fact that a lot of our songs are very long so <laughs> <laughs> the cover songs being short enough to to actually release as a single yeah that pretty much sums it up yeah i mean well the first the uh, vintage medley basically we took two of our longest songs and made a medley out of them so it's another 12 minute piece of music <laughs> that wasn't going to be a single <laughs> yeah unfortunately uh people's mind you know they get distracted a little too easy for stuff like that but we will continue making long songs we're not gonna sell out and fucking do this radio rock bullshit with the <laughs> unless it's called for but yeah pretty we much it's like off. yeah it's pretty much um you know o to despair was i think that was kind of released as semi of a single didn't have a video for it but um yeah. again that song that's probably our our the song, at least, that has the most streams for sure, and it's in its original format, the version that can be found on the Prelude to Sorrow. Yep. So, um, yeah, it was already kind of out there, so it just kind of made sense to do some songs that people also were familiar with as well, and you know, it, of course, were redone for a Witherfall record, but it's something that maybe I, I've always been a fan of when bands kind of do covers, and I like to hear their uh, interpretations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like with that. typo totally. negative and yeah. fans like that. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot of bands that's done some covers that's made them, I think, better. <laughs> but as I hate to say yeah. it. <laughs> exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah, I love Bob Seger's music, but I absolutely love Metallica's version of "Turn the that's Page." That's a great version. Yeah, that's a great version of the song. And I get shit for saying that, and I'm like, well, if you don't like it, don't listen to it. That's plain and simple. <laughs> yeah exactly that's why when people like complain all the time about mm -hmm. you know bands re-recording shit and stuff like that it's like no one's stopping you from listening to the original versions like yeah. fucking find something else to bitch about it's yeah it's not like they wipe the original off the face of the earth when they make it. <laughs> <laughs> although i do know a few people that would probably want that to happen with some songs so they have to buy the new ones and therefore <laughs> Like, Usually yeah. it's all done for uh, someone signed a shitty, a, a shitty contract. <laughs> I think Jake is drinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a little candid. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the Tom Petty cover. I won't back down. I think that is a tremendous task, and you guys did an awesome job on it. Let's talk about what stuck out for this song to say we need to tackle this. We were drunk. <laughs> yeah, really, it it wasn't even really thought about. It was we were doing pre-production for the song Shadows off of a uh, APS, and then we um, 
uh, it was just really late at night and probably six bottles of wine deep. We had some cigars and Joseph and I had, we had, we had, you know, just run through the original version of I Won't Back Down. It's just a song that everyone kind of knows that's ever picked up an acoustic guitar before. So, but then we just decided to be like, Hey, let's just completely fuck this up and let's <laughs> make it, let's drop the tempo. Mm-hmm. Let's do some chordal reharmonization and make it really minor sounding. And that's what we did. And we're like, well, we got to do bonus tracks anyway. So let's just throw this one on. I mean, and um, we're, we're, we're Tom Petty fans. This isn't like, you know, it's not like we were just like, oh, let's pick something easy. We, sure. I think J- Jake was actually at Tom Petty's final show. Oh, in wow. Yeah. Hollywood. The House of Blues. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. The Hollywood Bowl. Damn. Um, yeah. yeah. A week later, he died. Jeez. And uh, yeah, another thing about death too. That whole video is that's recorded there. Oh Jesus! Um, yeah, that place for one got wiped out by a massive hurricane. Like um, it was Hurricane Michael in Panama City, Florida. And um, unfortunately, too, the studio owner JJ Cruz just uh, passed away Saturday as oh, well. Wow. So Jeez. there's a uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of darkness in the Witherfall camp. Anybody that's close to us should just run, because Joseph <laughs> and I are pretty much the Grim Reapers. Okay, this interview's yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smart move. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, every time we make a record, at least one person ends up dying. Oh, yeah. geez, don't tell me that. Damn it. I mean, it's just true. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it is. I mean, uh, it's pretty sad. Uh, a tale that wasn't right. That was shot by Don Adams. How was working with him on this? We always work with him. <laughs> yeah, we uh, actually a lot of that a lot of that footage from a tale was kind of done guerrilla style when we were on tour in Japan. So we kind of did it with uh, GoPros and all that kind of stuff. And, and and Don's a great editor, so he just he knows what we want and he he knows what we want things to look. So we just give him all the footage and he edits it. And he he did shoot all of uh, I won't back down and uh, Oh to despair. Go to despair, moment of silence, yeah. and vintage too, which uh, that to me is like one of my favorite ones that we've done. It's a tribute yeah. video to our late drummer Adam Sagan, and uh, I thought his editing on that is just—it's amazing. Yeah, he actually did some post-production on the portrait video as well, hmm. along with Eduardo Rodriguez, who's like a pretty big director. Yeah, I mean, we have some we have some really cool friends that help us out here and there. All right, so I want to talk about Chris Zeus Harris. Did he produce this EP, or did he just mix and master it for you all? No, no. Jake and I always self-produce. Okay. Yeah, he's he's done. He's mixed and mastered every record we've done. So, and that's yep. that's pretty much it, though. He just comes in at the last. Uh, once everything's been tracked, we give it to him, and then uh, he uh, calls us crazy for writing songs <laughs> that are twelve minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Things were nuts. <laughs> But he's a great engineer. I mean, mix everything into one, I should say. I'll just get everything in there. He is so damn good. I mean, he's done a lot of shit here lately that I've seen. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Oh, yeah. He's he's one of the best out there right now. That's why we use him. Yeah. So for you guys, do you like having that control of being your own producer? I mean, you can do it whenever you want to, but do you, do you like this side of it? Yeah, we have to. The thing is that our music is so specific and so composed down to every last note and every last detail that we have to have 100 percent control over you know the way it's produced like the final mix you know like with with zeus he might go oh like this part i don't know if i can make it fit or we need to turn this way down that's you know we leave that mostly up to him (laughs) yeah yeah but i mean the, the thing is is that like jake and i will sit here at a desk you know, with keyboards and guitars and whatnot while we write. And it will basically, all the pre-production is already done when we write because we don't really test anything. We just write it and put it down and then go in and track it. Like, there's nothing left up to chance. So there's no, like, as far as the arrangements go and the main parts of the songs, everything is pretty much written in stone. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing like going in the studio and being like, what do you think we should, you know, we need a bridge right here. So let's all... No, put our heads together and think about no, it's, that's never done. It's all, yeah, we know what it is, and it's just the hardest part is this it really is is executing it with um, but but getting the right 
I, I hate the word vibe, but that's kind of the only word that's come into my head to it. The right feel to it as well mm. is, is right. what's in our heads out. Sometimes, I mean, fuck, if you were to have Anthony Crawford here, he would be listening to the songs and the demos that we give him. And he's like, I have no idea what the fuck you guys are going for right here. But, you know, he does it. And then at the end of the day, when he pops it into his stereo, then, it, you know, it's that aha moment. Yeah. Hope I pronounced this gentleman's name correctly. Christian Whalen did the cover art for this EP. Is he someone that you guys have worked with before previously? And if so, what's he bring to the table when creating the art for you guys? He is. He's yeah, he does every exclusively. He, yeah. Every every Witherfall album cover has been Christian Whalen. And as far as what he brings, I mean, he he's totally he kind of designed in a way the uh, the visual element for the band as far as the artwork goes. Because it's, I mean, really, we just kind of give them over. I think uh, Joseph will send them over some lyrics and some demo ideas, just some scratch stuff that Joseph and I have been working on. And then uh, he takes it from there. It's yeah. really, I mean, we'll give them like an idea of a, of a color, you know, because when you're writing the record in a way, you always kind of think about, at least Joseph and I, we, we see colors in a way when we're listening to uh, and composing the song. So like we even have the color in our mind for the next record, too. But it's that's really about it, and then he just takes it from there and, um, and yeah, does what he does. He takes the lyrical themes and the general mood of the music and just runs with it, sends us a sketch. And I don't think there's been any particular instance where we were like, no, <laughs> uh, I don't think we've ever had a choice because it's all. <laughs> It's all well, oil painted, so it's like. Well, at, at the end, yeah, like that's the the weird. Okay, it's kind of like, it's kind of like you're going down the highway and you're like, all right, I'm either gonna pass out and die, or I can set this thing to cruise control for ten miles and take a nap, and we'll see what happens. And <laughs> we kind of force our hand, you know, like once we approve a sketch, there's no going back. It's like oil on canvas, right? It's, yeah. What can you do? Yeah, it's uh. He's one of the only guys. There's a few that we really trust. Chris being another one, too. Zeus, you know, because we've worked with him for a while now that we, you know, like Joseph was saying before him, when it comes down to some decisions, if he's like, hey, I view this the best way, you know, we won't really fight him on it. And it's the same thing with Christian. Like, we've, we know that they, they'll give us the, the quality that, we, that we're looking for. But that's good you guys have people in place like that to where you don't have to worry. You can say, okay. They'll give us the truthful answer and don't bullshit us. Well, we still worry, <laughs> but yeah, but well, we, it, <laughs> it makes it a lot easier with those guys, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's it, this is our our baby, so yeah, we we spend a good a good year of our lives on every record, so it's it's like like Prelude to Sorrow, you know, we between Jake and myself, you know, is probably like six months in the fucking studio. <laughs> You know, if you're talking about eight hour days, like that's about six months of someone, you know, being there every fucking day. And that has that's not even including the writing and the obsessing over every note, you know, so it, it, it doesn't matter how much you trust someone like you don't want to give someone LSD and put them in front of a fucking kitchen table full of like knives no. and like fall asleep <laughs> on the floor. No, no. Yeah, it's it's one of those. It's. Yeah, it, no matter what, there's still some sort of angst, you know, especially whenever you, you know, you're you're looking at the final product of something, you know, whenever yeah. when it's whenever something is coming in, you're like, holy fuck, I hope I hope he knocked it out of the park on this. But Christian always does. And, and we were actually we were on tour in Sweden back in March, I believe I think it was March. And um, we played uh, Malmo and he came out and like, right. yeah. we had a great time hanging out with him cool he's one of he's kind of like a one of those recluse guys and so it was really cool to see him out in the wild <laughs> <laughs> what Jesus. do you hope everyone takes away from this ep or message you hope they hear while listening to it or just any of where the fall is music in general what do you hope they get from it guys <laughs> message of hope <laughs> uh <No. laughs> i i don't know i mean i hope they uh I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I, I don't think Joseph and I write for anybody except ourselves. So we That's... really don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, you know, if, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't not really like, 
I mean, hopefully, hopefully some people get like some sort of emotional thing from it, you know, I guess, cause that's, you know, if they're, if you're not feeling anything from music, what's the point of, of listening to it? Right. So right. I would just say some sort of emotion, whether they fucking hate it or they love it, you know, if they're feeling some sort of, I don't know, some sort of quality to it. And I guess we're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, as long as people are listening to it, they can think whatever the fuck they want. Do you guys still see this band musically growing from where it started or has it just been more of a personal growth for the each of you involved with this? The band has definitely grown. I mean, just, just Anthony Crawford alone, he came in as exclusively a hired gun and, uh, you know he he's grown close to us musically and personally i think and i think it's it's just going to make the band better like on prelude i think that uh, our sound ha- has evolved and it's become its own thing you know nocturnes was kind of like jake and i kind of feeling each other out as far as you know writers like and 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 composition and you kind of get like kind of like a, a mix between like his and my influences but on prelude it's i think witherfall's become its own thing yeah and and yeah and then the the next one too it's not like it's gonna be um yeah i, I would just say it's just it's just growing you know as far as like you said as far as, as witherfall becoming its own writing you know like entity what can fans expect at a show from witherfall who have not got to see you guys live as yet what are they gonna get when they come out and see you <laughs> oh my god uh well it depends yeah. on what night uh you'll get that's uh, true you will get a bass solo of some sort whether it be electric or acoustic <laughs> which is don't find those too many times in these shows somebody's gonna be drinking on stage yeah someone's gonna be drinking on stage Joseph's gonna be yelling at the keyboard player <laughs> um <laughs> i don't know man you guys gotta come out and see yeah, it's- um it's a mixed bag for sure. Yeah, especially on the acoustic tour, man. It was every night we wanted to do something a little bit different. Whether it we was... didn't even know, like that. The fucked up thing about that acoustic tour is we put together two songs that we didn't even rehearse. It was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, but like the sound check we did, we're like, yeah, let's do that, okay. And then we yeah. just went ahead and did whatever we wanted. That's the thing when you're dealing with uh with like what I call quote unquote real musicians you know it's like you can easily do that stuff and just call out like hey we're gonna you know fuck 32 bars a night let's make it 64 you know (laughs) and uh you know go for it you know and if you fall on your face then you better know how to squeeze in and out of a fucking sour note this acoustic tour did the fans seem like they were digging it more versus just your standard metal show it's hard to tell because it's a totally different different atmosphere you know it's like kind of when you're um it would be like going to an opera you know to go see a comedy you know versus a drama it's it's totally different yeah. i would say we, we had we had people we had a lot of people that were coming up to us i, I think the biggest question was why are we doing an acoustic tour and like I mentioned earlier, it was it wasn't our choice, you know. And um, but I'm really glad we did because it, you know, hell, Witherfall is almost like two different bands now. It could be we could do a one night an acoustic set and then the next night an electric one, you know. Yep. So would you guys consider going on a, another acoustic tour if if presented? Of course. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, like the playing aspect to it. 45 minutes when we were on stage on that were amazing. So we're living in the digital era, guys, of recording albums to get music out quicker. And now we've got social media to reach out to more folks. Do you like this that we're living in of getting albums out quicker and plus reaching out to more people with social media now? It's a double-edged sword. I mean, yeah. like, yeah, I can uh, I can go ahead and, and put something up on our website and post it on Facebook and immediately start selling it. But, uh, you know, like, there's so much clutter. Like, there's so right. many you know, want to be local bands out there that, that can do the same thing. And there's so much noise, you know, that you really, people, people turn off a, a lot of that, you know, they, they're not as receptive. It, it used to be, you would search out like in a music magazine, like, you know, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're not going to like name dates and how old we are, but you know, all of us have looked at like, I don't know, like a revolver or a metal edge or a guitar world and, and you're looking at the ads to see who's coming out with a new record. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, is that new Guns N' Roses or whatever, right? But now it's you're just turned off. Like, you're scrolling through your Facebook feed, which is in reality like the modern 
magazine, but everything's all mixed up into one fucking big publication. And you are ignoring every fucking ad. Like, you're ignoring everything except which one of your friends is fucking the other one of your friends. Like, it's all you're paying attention to. That's very true. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, it, it's totally a double edged sword because. I mean, it's, I, I don't know, I guess it's cool sometimes people can find, basically find out about your band, you know, going through some thread or something like that, but there's so many goddamn bands, though, you know, it's just like it's, it, like Joseph said, it's pretty much, it's just very saturated, you know, and um, and, and people also just, instead of buying a record, they might go to YouTube and just, you know, fucking stream it whenever they want to, or fucking put it on when they're entertaining some chick at their place or something like that rather than actually you know, buying the vinyl so what made you both want to become a musician what was that spark for the both of you that said yeah i want to do that i don't know i didn't really have any other choice <laughs> it was just like uh when i was four years old i was gene simmons for halloween so i just i loved i loved music from just you know from fucking birth like there was i, I just wanted to be in a rock band Exactly one moment that I was like, oh, I think I want to, like, this would be a cool career path. No, it was just like, it was already set. Yeah. As far as being inspired to be a musician, I, I don't know. Is that separate from being inspired to want to pick up a guitar? <laughs> <laughs> because I just thought that fucking Slash looked cool and I liked Guns N' Roses songs, but I had no idea that that meant I wanted to be a musician. That took a little bit more time down the road. Is there a country that stands out or shocks you both that Witherfall gets support from or your music even gets played there? I'm really shocked by any place just because, like, in the internet age, everything can kind of be except, except China's kind of difficult for us. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm really appreciative that we have Japan behind us so much. Yeah. Is there a band on the bucket list for the both of you that you would like to work tour with or maybe even do an album split, possibly, if anybody? Wow, an album split. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think for both of us, a uh, bucket list band that their fall would like to tour with for sure is King Diamond. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And, uh, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like King Diamond? Yeah. Yeah. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Witherfall's new EP Vintage. You want to get out and check that out via Century Media, and it's out now. So get out and pick this up. Pick up all their stuff they got out there. You will not be disappointed. Guys, how can folks stay in touch with you? Buy some merchandise, this EP, tour dates, things like that. How can they do that? That's Witherfall.com, sir. And before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Of course. This is Jake Dreyer. And Joseph Michael of the band Witherfall, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Stick around. Check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and soon our Twitch link. And also get out and check out Witherfall. You will not be disappointed in these guys' music. So thank you guys so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, thank hey, you. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you for the interview. And stay away from me. You got to cause death. <laughs> <laughs> Warn the record label. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.